And we're back for what could potentially be our final game of the day. That's if Evil Geniuses can make it four in a row. They dropped their first game of the day against Fnatic in the front end of their double header here today. And uh, since then, they've been on a roll, three in a row, as a matter of fact, now leading Team Liquid one to nothing and looking to make it their second consecutive win. I'm your host here in AC Chambers, joined by Trout Dota, as always, for the commentary, insight, and analysis. And, uh, yeah, EG, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Same thing for Team Liquid. And I'll tell you what, these teams are, didn't, didn't put on their creative hat today. Didn't, didn't put it on, man. Just didn't bring it. Okay. Ralph is either muted or unavailable. Oh, 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 There's oh, there. the oh. man. We're going to have to I get swear. you. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get you a big red. It, it needs to be like in radio studios. I need, I need an on-air button for you just to make sure that you uh, it's, always You know, it's only job. because... It's only because I've been, like, I'm finally getting better, but I was so sick for, like, the last few days that yeah. I didn't want to just be constantly coughing in the mic, so I'd constantly <laughs> turn off my mic when I wasn't talking. So. Right. But I'm better now, so it shouldn't be a problem. But I was going to say, um, yeah, it's, I feel like we're watching a replay because I think literally right now the bands and picks are identical. Yep. Like, even the bands. So even the sides. Even the sides are identical. Yeah. Um, even though we switched, and, like, in, uh, in game one, like, like I said during the draft there, uh, EG intentionally chose... Um, that picked side and picked Radiant before they uh, before they took first pick and Liquid picked first there and this time it was Liquid's turn to pick first and they opted to take first pick and EG once again said Radiant so the hell with it it works man you know what I always thought would be the most bad mannered shit ever is to <laughs> and it's never happened but it's it's come close before in my history of watching games and playing games um, but to pick the exact same lineup that you just beat from the other team. So, for example, if EG picked the same lineup that Liquid played last game and then beat them, like, that would be the most bad-mannered, like, thing ever. I, I've seen it come close. I've seen, like, four out of five heroes picked, and then, like, the other team bans the last year so that they can't do it and just get embarrassed. Yeah. Wouldn't that be hilarious? I mean... I, I got to admit, anyway. I, I've got a five stack of friends, and we do team <laughs> matchmaking. We tried to do that to a team once, and it, it, it didn't work. It was a bad lineup. <laughs> we should we should have learned. It, it, it wasn't going to work, so... But uh, anyway, yeah, I mean, you can basically just uh, go back and rewind uh, the video or check out the VOD if, if it happens to be up already and and uh, see and listen to our commentary there. Basically exactly the same, though. I, I'm, I'm really hoping they don't one position the Dazzle this time. I just don't know that they got that much out of it. Yeah, I can't say last game was really won by Mason that game. And it just the hero's effectiveness really... I don't know. I, I didn't really agree with this item build either. Obviously, b building more heal into an AA is kind of kind of weird. And actually, we have yeah, we have the same exact picks right here. So um, AA is quite good against Dazzle in that sense. And now, a little bit of change is Centaur is banned out for Liquid, and that for good reason, because we talked about how good you know of, of a job RTC did, and he did. But I think that again, this goes back to Universe being really, a, I think, the standout player for, in my opinion, of EG mm -hmm. as of late. And that that ulti was just so effective so many times, and uh, they banned that out for good reason. Shadow Demon seems to be a new signature support hero for Zai anyway on EG, and I know it's it's a very good hero for Shadow Fiend specifically in keeping him alive. And yeah, yeah, we'll have to see how they work that in. Again, it's it's. It's in air right now whether Dazzle's going to be a four position or a one position. Shadow Demon's my favorite hero in Dota and always has been, like going all the way back, especially in the heyday of, of Lifestealer when he was a constant pick and, you know, Animage PL and so on and so forth. He just hard counters everything annoying, basically. And uh, I tend to play the four and the five um, whenever, whenever I play with my friends or with any kind of organized sense. And I absolutely love the hero for all the reasons you just named. And EG this time going to pick up a Tidehunter. And, you know, just based on what we saw last time, I really, really hope they farm that Tide Hunter. Like, it, you know, they could end up doing something like an offlane Tide and, or even a duo lane, um, as we saw that work whenever they had the Enigma. And Enigma has to be a hero that Liquid considers banning with this fifth ban just based on the success they had with it. But, uh, you know, again, I've seen EG do it before. You, you give the farm absolute, or the uh, Tide absolute farm priority for the first 10 or 15 minutes. He gets up arcs in a blink, and then if he's able to be effective before BKB start to come out on the core heroes on the enemy side, it's tough to slow down that kind of momentum. Yeah, I I know that when Fear was playing with them, they would run heroes like Tide and Centaur and Playmaker heroes with a blink um, on him a lot. And I don't know if either one, Mason, is just not comfortable with those type of heroes or if they're just kind of changing up their draft. I, I still think it's actually going to be an offlane Tide here. And I, I, I think that, and I, I just feel like all the farm going onto your core is tied 
as a one position is not going to be that effective against Nix and Invoker. And again, I, this brings me back to I, I, I still question why he didn't go Quas Wex. I mean, ob obviously the Exhort's good and coupled with Ancient Apparition, and you saw some cute little plays there on Peter. I'm sure he had a f terrible time. <laughs> But I still think that, like, 9 times out of 10 with the buffs to Quas Wex, I still think it's better. And I still think that it has much more usefulness as a team uh, against um, against EG. And I know that Koik was very good at Quas Wex because we've seen him play it against Na'Vi, for example. And unfortunately, they lost that series, but he did play outstanding. And I would still like to see Quas Wex come out. I think it's way more effective. I think it's way more reliable as well. Weaver picked up, and uh, I do agree with you, by the way. it's You know, we, we talked about the options they had available to them in Game 2, and I honestly thought they would hybrid uh, run more of a hybrid build. Um, even just one point into Exhort can help you out in lane. Then you can switch it up and go pure Quas Wex after that. Still have Sunstrike available. Yes, it's not going to be very powerful, but it's still there if you need one little shot to get them in the Shattered Range or just a little bit of extra, um, extra damage or what have you. But um, not the case. This time, it, they will be farming the Weaver. That's almost 100% uh, going to be TC's hero. Bulba was a, uh, had a great game on the Nyx Assassin last game. So I yeah. would imagine that'll be back. Koikva on the Invoker. Demon most likely on the Ancient Apparition, which means they're looking for a way too sexy hero to round things out. Bane was banned by EG this time. And they go ahead and take out the Rubik, knowing way too is the last remaining player that needs a hero. And we'll see what Liquid wants to ban here, but... I mean, Liquid, if there's anything bad, it's pretty obvious what they're doing. I mean, it's really not all that different at all from what we saw in Game 1, and we'll see if EG throws us a curveball with this last pick to help them abuse it. Yeah, um, the problem with this last ban for Liquid is that they go Wraith King, actually, which is maybe what EG wanted, but Bloodseeker, wow. All right. I'm this is fun. And I can tell you this, man. By the way, this makes me extremely happy. This means that, to date, Bloodseeker has appeared in the D2L three times um, ever since our inception way back uh, in 2012. Bloodseeker, in the three times he's been picked, obviously this is number three, so we'll see what the result is. He is 2-0 and in the other times. And huh. this is the second time I've seen him picked against the Weaver. Bloodseeker just drops a big old deuce on Weaver. He makes it so hard for Weaver to do much of anything, especially in the early game. He's excellent. At shutting that hero down early. Um, you get off the silence on him. He can't do much. You silence, you rupture him. And then, yes, obviously, eventually he'll get a Lincolns. And Lincolns is just going to be of increased importance now. But look at the abilities they have to, to break the Lincolns, even once it does come out, between Disruption, between Dazzle, with Poison Touch, um, and so on. I, I, I Gush, even, is a nice ranged way to break the Lincolns. Like, Bloodseeker, I think, has the potential to, to, to have a big game. And it will be Mason farming it. And I, I actually really, really like this. And this is what I was talking about, taking advantage of the lanes and recognizing, okay, we know exactly what you're going to do. Let's, let's do something different and see if you can deal with it. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of Bloodseeker. I think this hero, after the buffs especially, is, is actually quite good and underrated. I really like him. And he is good, yeah, against Weaver. Um, it's, it's very easy, though, to say on paper that, you know, I can just silence him and then he can't Sakuchi or time lapse or whatever. And, and that can very well happen, especially if you have a setup stun like Blink Ravage or something. But practically, it's not as easy as it sounds. And especially when the one, it's going to be a one position Weaver. I really hope, for Liquid's sake, that he goes a very boring item build, but very effective in Lincoln's BKB. Right. I think that's going to be have to be his item build and rely on damage from Koikva. And, and hopefully Demon gets a fast Ags like he did last game. And just, I, I, it's a boring item build, it, it, but I think I it's think very it's necessary this game. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you, but that, but it, that's kind of just the, the the genius of the pick is basically he forces that he makes that your build. Now, where in the hell is your damage going to come from? I mean, yes, there's Koikva, and you can play him as a core. He maybe he rushes a Midas and decides to uh, just be a damage dealer. Bulba, we saw how effective he was. He got off to a great start. But there's only so much you're going to get out of those heroes, especially when you get between 30 and 40 minutes. And if you're forced to get up Lincoln's BKB, you're still going to be building right-click deep into the game, your first your first big right-click item, while Arteez is going to be sitting most likely, unless they do a phenomenal job of holding him down. He's going to be sitting on uh, on items that are going to allow him to blow these heroes up, especially if TC does get silenced, can't Shikuchi, can't time-lapse. And I think that's really where all of Liquid's attention has to be. Don't let yep. Arteezy farm. Keep him down at all costs. Buy time for uh, for Weaver to do his job. Well, it has to be that, especially with a Venge pickup, because I actually don't really like the Venge pickup here. I, 
again, this is a hero I am a big fan of. I really like Venge as a hero, but I feel like with this draft with Liquid, especially what up against what EG has, I think they could have got a lot more greedy. I think they could have picked a jungler or uh, and just farmed up in the jungle. I don't think that EG really has the means to go aggressive against Weaver. It's too difficult, and it's too difficult to lock him down early on in the laning phase. Although, as I say that, it looks like they're running upwards. And maybe, yeah, they have sentries, and okay, maybe they are going to go around. I don't think this is necessarily a straight up, I want to try lane against you, more of a, maybe we can get a pick off onto like AA. Yep, smoke up. They're going to try to kill Demon here. Yep. Uh, I honestly wouldn't mind if they stuck with a pure tri lane, because that's going to accomplish two things. We'll keep an eye on them as I talk. Um, keeping tri lane pressure up, all you need is experience on these heroes. Gold on Tide certainly helps to get up the Ar Arcane Boots and Blink Dagger. But if you could just disrupt Weaver while freeing space for the Bloodseeker and the Shadow Fiend to farm because you have tri lane pressure in their face, hold that thought. Demon disrupted. PPD is right there with him, places his first point into Poison Toucher. And, yep, gone. Oh, Actually, my. Shadow Wave, excuse me, not Poison Touch. Off of the Illusions, the damage output immense. Ends up dying, but Way 2 is going to die here as well. And he drops TC doing what he can. And they're just not, they don't care. TC has Shikuchi. He's going to have to spend it. He may be able to maybe get Zai with the help of Demon, who's right back up. Universe and Zai hung around a little bit too long. Universe comes back down, has an Anchor Smash, but the Salve is going to make that an impossibility. And Universe turns around and re-engages with PPD, Demon, uses no. the Shadow Wave. Demon got greedy himself, ends up feeding back another one. We got five kills in 90 seconds. Early game, aggression, the name of the game, no doubt about it. And this is kind of what I was talking about. Like, all this time, the targets we're talking about and what they mean, Arteezy in particular, if they keep these three heroes here, being able to throw off the shadow wave off of the disruption and the illusions, gives you an immense amount of damage output. We'll see if they can do it here. Size right there, a little bit early on the disruption that time. And they're just getting right behind the tower. But all the time they're doing this, Arteezy knows he can't get pressured from roaming supports out of this top lane. And Mason's able to just continue to peck away at Bulba and farm himself up. This is, I really, really think, a brilliant draft and a brilliant laning decision coming out of EG. Yeah, and, and you know that they can't do this if they just straight up walk to the tri lane and show themselves and like, yeah. hey, we're going to tri lane against you. It had to be something a little bit more sneaky. Oh, no, this could be the courier. Okay, good. Thank God he actually <laughs> microed it away. Quick for you also know something's up. And he went Xord again. So it kind of makes him, like you mentioned last game, a little bit more vulnerable as he doesn't have the ghost walk and a little bit more clunky. I, I don't agree with that. I don't know, man. I just... Maybe it's, he's being directed by his team to do so, but I just think Quaswex is better. Also, that, that death onto Demon was complete, completely unnecessary. Agreed. He literally just walked in and died for no reason. And it would have been fine, too, because TC got both of those kills, and even though he just netted his first CS, oh my god, that's really bad, it would have been okay, and he would have been able to stay in the lane, I feel. So, unfortunate misstep there from Demon, as it could have been a 2 for 2, but now it's a 3 for 2. And they are rotating PPD back up. They're going to end up go switching to a 2-1-2. Universe in trouble. Caught with the magic missile. Chilling touch. Gives him a lot of damage. PPD doesn't have a point in the grave, but he won't need it. Using the shadow wave to healing up, heal him up just enough. Um, they're going 2-1-2, and I don't mind that. I actually am a little surprised they didn't leave Zai up there. I think they could continue to bully this lane around because all they have to do is soak experience and disrupt TC. They don't have to get any more kills at this point. They already came out ahead there. Got the first blood. They also lead in overall kills. And they're also freeing Arteezy up to just farm in the face of Koifa, which won't be a problem, as we can already see. He's sitting at 15 CS to the 13, and that's only going to get worse as he gets more and more levels and more stacks in the Necromastery. In the meantime, Mason is having his way with Bulba at bottom, and that's really all there is to say about it. In fact, Bulba right now just going to pre-rune and give Mason completely unfettered free farm. And uh, I'm interested to see how Mason builds out. What do you think would be the right call? Hold that thought. Way too coming through. Has a magic missile in the ready. Throws up the wave of terror, and no follow-through. But yeah, Mason. Item build, go. Um, I personally, with you know, obviously we don't see a Bloodseeker often, but I think something somewhat standard is like four staff um, drums, treads, something you know, some stuff like that gets you fighting early. Because I don't think this hero is very good in the late late game. I think he's quite awful actually. Oh. Unless you have oh, TC, TC can't be doing that. Cannot be giving up solo kills to PPD and Universe by themselves. Didn't even have a disruption to lead it off. Zai was busy killing stuff in the jungle. What happened? How does that happen? I got there just in time. He got aggressive. He got hit with the shadow. Uh, um, he got hit. He basically just got hit with shadow wave and poison touch. Then there was a gush that slowed him down, and Shikuchi just didn't get him out of range in time, and Ty was able to track him down. He also had no support. Way too and Demon were uh, too busy being cool elsewhere on the map. And this is an... Or like... 
honestly, at this point, the way this game's going, I it wouldn't surprise me. It's very pubish build, but when you look at how squishy their team is and the fact that there's only really one natural BKB builder in the Weaver, and even that's a departure from the standard, a radiance on Mason. If he continues to farm at this rate, I wouldn't be shocked to see it at all. Yeah, no, I agree. Because the uh, the heroes on Liquid are so squishy. Yeah. So. Radius BKB good could definitely work. I, I have to agree with that. What I tell you what I don't agree with is his skill build at all. <laughs> Especially when he's free farming. There's literally no reason to have Bloodbath. Like, I agree. None. The th oh, wait, wait, wait. You know what? I'm wrong. I, I got him screwed up. I thought that Thirst was... Uh... Oh, no, it is Thirst. Bloodbath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, no. I was yeah. right. Sorry. I'm, I'm screwing up. I don't know what's wrong with my brain, but <laughs> yeah, I, there's like no reason to have Bloodbath. It should all be into Thirst. Yep. Like I, I don't even see like in this in this instance when you have complete free farm and look he still has two tangos in his salve. I would even say why get even one point in bloodbath? You know yep. you could just get three in thirst, two in blood rage, have the extra duration on your silence. Right. So I mean it's it's kind of a miss pit or um uh like nitpicky thing, but I think that's what the hero is good at is giving you the extra movement speed and damage from the uh, from the thirst. Oh yeah, that's what I, makes a hero. I completely agree with you and. I think he still would have won at least one point in there, but against the Weaver, maxing out the uh, the silence, I think would have been the right way to go. Um, but or nonetheless, not even the silence, but just the the thirst is, is yeah. so good. Yeah, that's it it. that's that's what what makes you see like 800 movement speed blood seekers running <laughs> around and being able to track everyone down. It's so OP if yep. you you get a good early start. Yep. Yeah, I don't understand that, but again, that's kind of nitpicky because. He's not really going to be doing too much as a one position. He's going to be sitting here farming for a little while. But we might we might see it come to bite him in the ass a little bit later. And we could Probably see, not, but maybe. We can see the CS board is moving heavily in favor of EG, and this is very problematic for a number of reasons. Way 2 is now there just to try and help Koikva out, and showing his face in RTZ even then is not all that worried about it. This, uh, this lane choice up at top, even just leaving the duo instead of the single, is certainly working out well. And RTZ, I haven't been watching if Zai's been stacking. He actually hasn't, and that's a little surprising, to be honest. But um, way too going to move in. Might get eyes on RTZ. In the meantime, up at top, we might see a dive. They're thinking about it. And, yeah, way too not able to engage here. Universe is level 6 and has a Ravage, so Liquid has to be extra careful now. Yeah, and that's a very weird movement from way too as well. He wasn't smoked. They didn't have wards showing him, and I, I feel like that RTZ just saw that. I bet he's going to take those sentries and just counter that right now, because that was very obvious. Yes, uh, maybe he's moving it, I don't know. Maybe he didn't see it, it is nighttime, so. Your Vendetta, Bulba, Arteezy's in trouble. Yep. Cop of the Magic Missile, and blown to pieces. I'm honestly a little curious why he was hanging around in the jungle so long anyway. He had the wave shoved right back up. Oh, the Courier! Almost brought down by Quakeva, got off one auto attack on it. As, uh, able to get it under control. Right at the last minute. A couple of Midas's are out. One on RTZ, one on Quake, but both RTZ's out about a minute, minute and a half early. But this top tier one about to drop. And given that Universe is level six, if they get this down and all three make it back home safely with no big reaction, I would not. I think they're just going to start to collapse everywhere. There's just no reason not to. They're in great shape. Hell, PPD's almost level six as well, and Zai's level four and a half. Yeah, Liquid or um, TC's going to have to bail. I wonder if they ever saw Demon go up there, because if they did, he's screwed, but. Doesn't look like they suspect. Maybe Zai could have just shot a Shadow Poison, but that's a shot in the dark if you don't know. Um, yeah, RTZ must not have seen way too place that because he was standing around there and I, I figured he would just start pinging it out. No, he is pinging it out. Okay, he knows because things are blocked. That's why. But yeah, very good start. They got the top tower. Ravage is ready, and we're going to see a very early blink coming out for Tide, and he's going to be such a huge impact hero here for EG. Well, we could see. Mason did pick up his drums, and I was holding out hope that maybe we would see the uh, the uh, Radiance Rush. Not the case, though. He will be going with a much more well-rounded build, and can't blame him there. Bulba's hooked up with Way 2 again. They're going to go looking for another kill, and they might get in just about the same spot. Arteezy standing right there next to that medium camp. Bulba's got eyes on him. Vendetta has about three, about one-third time left. Arteezy's pulling back. He's going to run right into Zai. And... Yep, Bulba has to break off the pursuit. Not liking the way that looked or felt. And Waitu was over there as well. So uh, Mason, Arteezy, and Zai able to stay safe. In the meantime, we can see PPD is under an invis rune. Had eyes on Koikva for a moment. It looks like, yeah, everyone's beginning to rotate around, just try to set themselves. But this is what I was talking about. We're beginning to see collapses on other lanes now as mid is kept busy. 
TC can do nothing but farm because he is so item dependent this game, and Ortiz he helps bring down another tower. This time, the tier one at bottom. He, yeah, and he literally TP's mid. They're they're just gonna fight mid now because they want to use this ravage. Bloodseeker, I'm sure he wants to use his ulti as well. And it does look like he's going for early game items. He's got drums. Um, I I like four stat because you can push people out of your rupture and it does <laughs> more damage. Um, so we'll have to see if he goes for that. But I like the drums at the very least. Gives you that extra movement speed, attack speed if you um if you want to you know pop that charge and everything. And this is just gonna be five man Dota I think for EG. Yeah, why not? They're in plenty good enough shape. Take a look at the net worth. I mean, Quake was the only one even remotely in range. Tidehunter has a higher net worth right now than TC does. And Jeez. yeah, what I mean, what are you going to do? You you need at at a minimum a, two items to really feel survivable before you even begin to build. Right click, and there's Zai with a disruption on the Quakeva. He'll be able to pull back for the moment, but Universe is there, and he's oh, going to no. ravage. Yep, there's the rupture. Quakeva, no point into Wex. So no ghost walk, and Universe, though he was cold snapped, is going to be able to make it away, and he is yet to have to ravage. Right now, there and there's the blink dagger. That is devastating. Arc Boots blink dagger on the tide at 11 minutes with Arteezy and Mason both basically free farming the whole game. This is getting ugly. I don't know why Koikfa walked back. Like, he got initiated on, and then he, like, walked back towards them, and obviously he can't see what we see, but he does have vision around the mid area. And should have maybe seen that heroes were in that kind of that little sticky area around Roshan in the trees there. So yeah, he walked back. Mason's gonna initiate at bottom lane. There's a sun strike, there's the vendetta to do some extra damage. And Zai, he cancels his TP. Little late, little tardy to the party, and Liquid gets a good one. That's uh, that's gonna buy them a little bit of time, but still. They're uh, they've got a long way to go. Haven't really even looked at the graph yet. But yeah, that's about what you'd expect. You're talking seventy five hundred gold ish. Uh, probably closer to about 6,000, give or take. Uh, advantage for EG, which means they've built 500 gold a minute. There's a Ravage, Solo Ravage on the Bulba. Didn't, don't think it got anyone else. Not, I think it missed Waitu. Oh, Bulba, yep, dies to the Shadow Poison. And behind that, Waitu trying to tuck away. Got him. Disruption right on the money. And, yeah, that was... That had to be down to the millisecond. The animation that plays whenever you successfully teleport was in progress. And that t that animation cannot last more than maybe at most 100 milliseconds. So another rupture on the Quake Fan mid PPDs right there to help him out. And TP in right in his face did not have the stun they needed. So Quakefa using the pub answer. It's like, oh, how do you counter? How do you counter uh, Bloodseeker? TP. That's all. Just TP. Yeah. yeah, I know they were laughing about something in mid. It had to do with Demon's ulti, I'm sure, but yeah, Quakefa able to get a kill onto uh, Arteezy. That's good for him. Here comes an Ice Blast, uh, just barreling down mid for whatever reason. Just Demon being Demon, throwing it at the fountain. And, uh, oh, I think maybe he was trying to catch our, our universe with the Sunstrike afterwards. Oh, Zai, I'm missing something, but Quakefa gets a Sunstrike on Zai, I think. Yep, I actually didn't see that either. I was watching the AA ulti, and looks like, yeah, he was killed in lane. And there's Bulba there with Vendetta on cooldown. Going to imagine that played a, played a part. Arteezy in the meantime, though, Midas is up and already has his Ogre Club up. TC, Midas as well, but just Bassian treads for him and is, yeah, remains less farmed than the Tidehunter does. And this is just this lineup really working for EG the way they drafted it. They're giving TC and Liquid as a whole very little room to breathe. Yeah, the hard part is, like, you look at, like, how can they team fight their way back into this Liquid that is, and it's very difficult to do it against specifically a tie that has as much farm with an early blink dagger and I feel like they would have had an easier time I, I'm sorry I have to keep going back to it but I feel like Quaswex is just better yep. against uh, team fight lineups like this with heals and big AoE ultimates and damage and oh PPD he's dead oh maybe he's got grave close. yep he can grave okay, himself he, sh he should be fine but um yeah I just I'm, I just really feel like Quaswex would be better and this is kind of a misstep though for me, G. I feel like they are pushing top tier tower, which is more worth a tier one. And they did lose one tier uh, tier one tower out of it, so Liquid get some kind of map control in, the, in their favor. But obviously they're a bit behind. If you look at the EXP though, it's actually slightly in favor of Liquid right now, which isn't too surprising because normally when you're pushing really hard, you're grouping up, so you're not you know using your resources as far as spreading out the EXP. Right. 
Yeah, they, I mean, they're running out of towers. They still have their tier two mid and bottom up. So it's not as if this game's completely over. Don't, don't make, don't mistake us. It's just getting more and more difficult to see how they're going to be able to flip it around. Mason narrowly missed by an ice blast at bottom. But now that they have their jungle taken away, like EG is going to be able to just farm Arteezy in mid and the jungle. This tier two mid is not going to last long at all, I don't think. Down at bottom, we have Mason and Geisha upon. That's another good kill. So, you know, if they can keep this up, it's going to force EG to back off onto their side of the map more and more often. And it'll give them time to do things like this. Maybe pressure the tier two. Looks like Arteezy's not really sure where he should be. He's kind of dancing back and forth, uh, moving forward, then pulling back. Now we see a ping onto the mid-tier two. Uh, tier two bottom continues to be assaulted. Zai's the one rotating over to try and do something about it. RTC by himself here trying to bang on that tier two mid. And, yeah, this is a win for Liquid, I think. They got the kill. They got more damage done. And now they're going to go back. And uh, RTC engaged upon by Bulba. AA ultimate does catch him. And he's going to have to back off because of it. Oh, he sidestepped the Sunstrike. Good for him. Um, I wanted to say too, bottom when you, I don't know if you caught that kill on to Mason when Venge and uh, Koikfa playing the Invoker got him. This, I mean, they got him, and it was actually really fancy. If you saw what happened was Venge went to go swap and then stun him, but Koikfa actually put the Sun Strike where Mason was about to get stunned, not thinking that he was going to get swapped. But Mason actually ran into the Sun Strike. It, it happened to work out perfectly, mm -hmm. but it just goes to show you that there is definitely miscommunication on Liquid. I'm seeing it. They just don't seem to be playing too well as one unit. They're, yep. they're not talking to each other enough or something, but it was a really funny play that just happened to work out in their favor. PPD is going to hit with the ice blast. Yep. PC's coming in with some damage, <laughs> and yep, he will fall. TC time lapses back to safety, avoiding the reaction from Mason. We've yet to see Mason really get his hands on TC. The problem is they dedicated enough up there that this is going to free up mid lane. And they have to collapse from distance as Koikva is coming out of their own jungle while Bubba makes his way over from the dire side secret shop. Size right there, and here we go. Good two-man imp here. Let's see if they want to engage off of it. Arteezy has a BKB up. Disruption by Zai. Used defensively. Could end up killing him. Yeah, he's going to BKB out of it. Thought about ulti and backed off of it. We see the tower is denied by Weaver in the meantime. So the tower does drop. The real estate does open up, but they don't get nearly as much gold. Arteezy actually ulted there. And oh, if if that hit, I think this could be an easy kill. He might still get the kill. Oh, look at RTZ. He's trying to juke, and he does. Nice. RTZ with the master jukes. It, if Sunstrike was available, <laughs> which it, it was, so yeah. that would have been a kill onto uh, RTZ. Great juking and jiving there from the young lean himself. Yep. And RTZ stays up and about for a little bit longer. Uh, Mason continues to farm. He's going Shadow Blade, by the way, as he's picked up his Shadow Amulet. And I, yeah. I kind of dig that. I kind of dig that. I think it's going to allow him to get position on uh, on the weave much easier. Of course, there's, the bonus damage is always handy dandy. But mostly, I think it's really just to, to sneak up on Weaver in particular. And he may, he's not going to, I mean, he doesn't have it done yet. Now would be a great time for it. There's the Ravage, and Mason comes in. There you go. Silence. Where are you going, TC? Back to the fountain. And that's what a Bloodseeker does to you whenever you're on a Weaver. So well played that time yeah. and very well worth a Ravage. <laughs> yeah, like that's what I was kind of talking about towards the beginning is that it, it needs to be set up with some other stun like the Ravage. Yeah, it's great if you if you blow those cooldowns now when they're in the lead. Um, it could be a little bit more difficult later on. Bloodseeker is a hero that I feel really does fall the F off um, if you if you don't get enough snowball onto him. And Lothar's or Shadowblade, while it is good for initiation, I feel, for this game, I, I don't know if I'm the biggest fan of it. I think... I think for all oh, Zai, he gets hit by the oh the ice blast missed on Zai in mid, but the sun strike did connect so could have been a kill. Demon unfortunately missed that. Zai by the way has a Midas. I don't know if you said that, but yep, he has a Midas for himself. Hadn't noticed, but you are correct. He's working on a four staff coming up next, and Liquid needs to get out of here. They're hanging around dangerous territory. Mason with his shadow blade is going to get eyes on Koikva. There it is, showed off. Rupture next, and trying the TP away. They have the damage. They do not. That last auto attack going to chase him all the way back to the fountain, but I, quick, uh, go ahead. I think PPD actually could have got the uh, Shadow Wave off. It's mm -hmm. super long range, and uh, if he got it off on the Bloodseeker attacking, it definitely would have been a kill. Oh, yeah. I, I could be wrong, but I know it's a very long range, and I, I feel like he might have been able to do it. I'm but hovering over the ability. You can see how big the circle is. It's huge. Yeah, I'll give him the meta than a doubt, and I know that he's a good enough player that he probably tried, so it probably was just a second, or just not a second, but a, a close out of range. Bulba, he spots out Mason. Doesn't have any sentries on him, though, so... Oh, he might run into them. This is kind of a precarious situation. 
And going to spin the Vendetta. PPD will get caught out and shattered to pieces. So they bring him down for free. Chilling touch up on the high ground. And EG needs to think carefully about this. There's no way they can fight. They have Ravage down. Arteezy has a low mana pool. And they just need to pull back and cut their losses. So, you know, this is another one of those games where Liquid maintains a kill lead and has for a while now, but they just keep falling further and further behind in gold. Almost five digits now. 7,500 gold to the advantage Jeez. of Liquid. Or of EG, excuse me. Yeah, it's it's the towers and it's the Midas's. Yep. Because the EXP is actually in favor of... Um, of. Ooh. Oh, here we go. Disruption. As the rupture went off, Mason right there to help clean this up. Down he goes. And this is a lineup. A lot of their ability to do anything to stop EG when they group as five is very much based on Demon. And when he's down, they can't fight. And we're seeing that. Like, they're not even trying to come over here and do anything about this. They're going to go ahead and actually send a bunch back. And, yep, Koikva's going to TP away in the meantime. And that's a little bizarre. Zion in the meantime gets caught. There's the Ravage that comes out. Caught three. Or caught two, rather. And Arteezy still chasing Bulba around. Hits him hits oh. him with the, the Shadow Rays. And AA Ultimate right there. Arteezy, very low health. Universe tanking through some of that damage, but should be fine. He has a mech as well. Can't heal right now, but they'll be able to heal one step. There you go. Uh, once the uh, Ice Blast wears off. But they're holding, holding the tower for the moment. TC still farming away. Is yet to find his Lincoln, so he really can't get relevant in any of these fights, at least until that item is up. Once it's up, maybe. But he gets a tower. Still, they're trading Tier 1s for Tier 2s across the board. Not a single outer tier tower remains, while all three Tier 2s still stand for EG. Yeah, that's what I was just going to talk about, is we, we're really seeing the effects of that top. Oh, Demon's in a huge trouble. One, two, three, punch from Arteezy. One, two, two. <laughs> Nothing wrong. With the Shadow Wave getting uh, the kill there for PPD, but... Yeah, we're really seeing the effects of that top lane, of the disaster of a top lane really for Liquid come into play because they could be they could have been fighting if with five if TC had a better time, but because he's had to, you know, play catch up for most of this game, even though he has a pretty good score, he could have been a lot more effective if he had an easier time up in that top lane. And as a Roshan attempt, we could see a big fight here, but Ravage is off cooldown. Let's see if they want to engage. Uh, good impale. Oh caught two. Now they're going to drop the rock coming from Koikva. Roche is still a decent ways off. Off goes the weave. Arteezy going to pop the ultimate, turning to go to work. PPD still up as well. He needs to decide. What's he going to do? He's hanging around for no reason. Universe is caught. He can blink at any point. Now will blink out. Arteezy pursued by Bulba. In the meantime, looks like Universe will be able to TP away. That's a big coup for Team Liquid and just what they needed to get momentum going back into their favors. They'll take the Roshan. TC will take the Aegis. And now he has Aegis Lincoln's things begin to change a little bit. It is going to be a bit of a pub build now on Mason as he does get that four staff. Uh, for the cost of the items he's built, I I wonder if Radiance wouldn't have been the right choice. I mean, yeah, obviously Radiance for him this game would have been, had to have been like basically brown boots Radiance, I feel. And then straight from that into a BKB, but... I was fine with his item build. I just I'm not sold by the Shadow Blade. Although I say that, and it's actually he's actually done work with it because he he lived right there for no reason because they're not carrying sentries or they're not placing them mm -hmm. from Liquid. I actually don't think they had him that time, and he just walked away. Like he he got graved from PPD and just walked away with the invis, and then PPD actually lived as well. I mean they got the value kill on Arteezy. That's important, and then they yeah. got the agent. So certainly not a bad fight for Liquid. They could have got more. I feel if they just had a sentry ready on maybe the Nyx. Maybe they need to buy a gem on Nyx or something. But I think they need to take a little bit more control, a little bit more initiative now that they have the ball rolling again. A ulti whiffs that time around. And TC now able to farm much more bravely. Not just because of the Aegis, so Lincoln's a big deal. I want to see if he does follow through with what we both thought was going to be reality, uh, which is going straight up for the BKB to follow. And he could run into a world of trouble. He will be able to Shikuchi to safety this time. They've got a ward down, so they see EG all coming on mass right to the north, and Wait 2 will react and teleport away quickly. This is freeing up space for Bulba to find some farm of his own. And, you know, like, I, I actually feel like Liquid's in a great position now. Taking that Roshan and flipping things upside down, such a big deal. If you're in EG's shoes, do you press the attack, or do you sit back and farm a little bit more on Arteezy? I mean, Arteezy is such a solid carry player in the late game, I think. It's fine. It's just taking your fights when you have Ravage up is basically the name of the game for EG. Um, again, though, I, I, I said this before, and maybe we'll see the effects of it, maybe not, but I, I do feel like Bloodseeker does fall off um, as time progresses. There is a five-man smoke here. 
Ravage is up. Mech online, obviously for universe. Arteezy, he's got his Yasha and Mask of Manus. As he's gonna show himself in mid by raising. That might give an alarm to uh, Liquid. TC could be in trouble. He has the Aegis though. He should be fine. Maybe can bait out some spells. Oh. Universe, one man Ravage. I don't know if I agree yep. with this. If nope, they, with the Bloodseeker they can kill him. That's always gonna be the answer. You think it's worth the Ravage for the Aegis? I guess, it, I think Liquid needed to be faster. If they can maybe catch someone here, it, it'll be worth it for Liquid. They maybe catch Zai. Okay, they catch one. They had the Aegis for quite, okay, yeah, no, still worth it for EG. I thought that Liquid could have got more if they responded a bit quicker. But they killed TC so damn fast that they weren't able to respond in time. So yeah, I think that's worth it for EG. Pretty much everything that makes Weaver the hero he is is just countered by Bloodseeker. If Mason's near him and they get any kind of a leadoff stun, on him, if Mason's anywhere in range, especially now with the four staff up too, that's going to be a dead weaver most times. And uh, right now, Liquid, I think, is responding well, though, saying, you know what? Ravage is down. We can go push, and what are you going to do? Yeah, you killed Weave. You, well, you took the Aegis, but we're still going to get something out of it because you spent so much to bring it down off of us that we can get a little map control back of our own. This is freeing up more time for Arteezy as he gets closer and closer to his Mantis style, only about 50 gold short of having his ultimate orb, so... Uh, less than a thousand gold now until he'll have up the full Manta style. Yeah, unfortunately, they got the tier two tower top. The AA ult did hit uh, Universe, and unfortunately, Bulba did miss his stun. But he's hit so many great stuns this game, you can't knock him for that. It's just going to happen. It's not the hard, or it's not the easiest stun in the world to hit. To hit, he also used Blink into Four Staff to try, but nonetheless, it wasn't that big of a deal if they killed him anyway because his Ravage was down. And they still got the tier 2 tower. Let's look at the graphs. I'm kind of curious. EXP in favor. Lots of pings going out. What's going on? Lots of pings. But EXP definitely in favor of Liquid now. About 3,500. And gold has dipped back into favor. Or uh, as, yeah, a little bit in favor of Liquid. But still in favor of EG overall. So we definitely got a game here going on. We can see they actually caught Mason there with a impale. But he got shadow bladed in time. There's the wave of terror. And Mason thought about pursuing the mouth, thought better of it. His team was a little far behind. Ravage is going to be off cooldown in about 25 seconds now. And here comes Arteezy's Manta. That's Dunsky. So he's getting very, very, very fat. Um, and that's going to become a big issue for Liquid as they don't really have... Uh, they're actually going to go Deso. That was my question. I saw that TC had picked up the Mithril Hammer, the first of what would eventually be two. But, on, you know, tough to tell if that's going to be a BKB mm -hmm. or a Deso. So he's going right click. What do you think? I don't know. I, I still think BKB is the item. I mean, it is kind of bad against Bloodseeker ulti because it'll still do damage to you, but I feel like, like we saw, I feel like if he gets caught in Ravage, he's dead. Oh, he's way too dead. He actually oh, spent he leave. Oh. Nope. Poison touch. Down he goes. TC shows his face there. And he doesn't have the Deso done yet. He will in a couple hundred gold. But that's a pretty decent win for EG. Roche still a few minutes out at a very minimum from being back up, but with Ravage unspent and that Venge down for 30 seconds, they might take a run at a Tier 3 here. Yeah, I've I've seen a lot in these in these matches with Liquid that I feel like Way Too Sexy is kind of playing a, a, a solo mission oftentimes. <laughs> and because when I see him dying, more times than not, he is nowhere near his team. Mm -hmm. Like, that happened right there last game on Bane. He was 1-8 and eight and just... Yeah, it's not even like team fight deaths. It's like I'm kind of running around warding or doing my own thing deaths. And I feel like, you know, a couple times on a support, not the biggest deal, but when it happens over and over, it, it could become a, a big deal for Liquid. Good A, ulti, caught three. Zai Universe and Arteezy. Mason managed to dodge it, and now with everyone back up to full strength, they might rethink this. They've got some good damage done, fair enough anyway. About a third HP on that tower. Bulba's sitting just to the south. This is level two Vendetta, so he's got time to be patient. Uh, before it expires. He's going to move in. He's looking for a target. Not sure who. Might end up going on Universe just to take his blink off of cooldown. and Or on cooldown, rather. So far, still hanging back. There's going to be the Cold Feet. And the Mask of Madness for Arteezy. Up oh, there we go. There's oh, no. a row. Oh, wow. What a ravage. They follow it up. They silence TC. Universe right on the money as he has been all day in every series. They do manage to pick off Arteezy behind the fight. But that's three down. Buyback from Arteezy immediately. Zai disrupts Bulba to give himself uh, some time to breathe. Universe blinks down, hits him with the gush. And there's the Courier. And the Courier is actually still alive. Not sure where it's going. You might want to get Throw under control here, guys. He's down. So 
throw uh, living up to his namesake. Uh, but there's a buyback from Bulba as well as they try to hold. Necro book three, helping buy some time. Impale only caught one. There's a sun strike to follow it. Cold snap helps out a bit. Bulba has been silenced, gets off the Vendetta. Mason ends up being hexed out. But it looks like they're going to end up being able to hold here. Arteezy bought back and went straight down mid. And oh. is, I didn't even see what happened up there. Was watching Arteezy in mid. Bulba's going to re-engage. Zai actually four staffs just out of range of that impale. Very quick thinking play there. What happened uh, to uh, to the Dazzle? He got he got sniped out by an AA ulti. And uh, Bloodseeker was actually really low as well, but he didn't tick down. But what I was going to say, yeah, I don't I don't know about this this Deso man. I feel like he has to have BKB, and I yep. know that the Blink Ravage was so super fast from Ty that he might not have gotten off, but if TC is very adamant about high APM and just very good reaction time, it's the only thing I feel like to keeping this Weaver sitting there fighting and doing actually anything in a team fight. Yep. So I, I just, I can't agree with this Deso pickup. I feel like, like I said at the beginning, he has to go boring items and it has to be BKB Lincolns. And it, you can see there, uh, Koikva's doing damage. He had an amazing meteor. He's got the Necro 3 and Sheep out. And he's doing lots of damage, actually. They just need the rest of the team to be alive so that they can follow up on the damage. And if you have a Deso and you're not doing attacks, then what does a Deso even do for you? So sorry to harp on him, but I just feel like it, it, it's not the right item pickup here. I agree. <clears throat> and this is much more the Koikva that I think we're all accustomed to seeing. He has had much more of an impact, sitting at 5-1 and one this time. Yeah. And pretty much everything that kept those buildings standing that fight is Koikva's. The Necro 3 creeps helped out a ton, being able to use the Hex, or at least threaten with the Hex, even if you held on to it and waited to use it on a prime target. Like, right now, Liquid is still breathing in this match, in large part due to Koikva and well-placed AA ultimates coming out of Demon. But I'll tell you what, man, how good is Universe? Like, really? I know. <laughs> he, he has really been, um, in, in my opinion, the shining star for EG as of late. I mean, just overall, him as a player, he never feeds the offlane, like, ever. He always gets farm, and he's always making the making huge plays with kind of blink initiations from whether it's Dark Seer, Wall Vax, or Tide, or Nyx, or Clockwork with you know awesome hooks and whatnot. He's just so solid and so consistent. And I think at the highest level of Dota, consistent consistency is the biggest thing. Not so much flashy plays like that's fun to watch and that shows off your talent as an individual player, but consistency is what really gets you the W. I feel at the end of the day. Could agree with you more. Consistency really is where it's at. and Especially as an offlane player, because we've talked about this before, but I feel like in this patch, offlane is really like a very, very high-impact role to be playing. Oh, yeah. Oh, it always was, really, even going back to TI2 and TI3 days. But what's really changed is just the way the, way the game has, has shaken out is there are so many more heroes that are viable in the offlane than there were before, like Nyx, Assassin, Centaur. I mean, these are heroes, even just a solo Tide is a little bit easier to execute. And we can see a Ultimate's going to come in. That's going to uh, snag Arteezy, but they've already brought down the racks at top, and they're going to try to base race this, and this is just goofy, to be honest. I have no idea what they were thinking down at bottom. Um, you're yeah. not going to be able to out, out base race a Manta Shadow Fiend that's hitting for 200-some-odd damage with a Mask of Madness. Uh, even Mason is hitting just about that hard too now. Shadow Wave is there. There's Universe, another Ravage. Only caught two with it this time, but it's going to be enough. Nice swap, actually. That's saved by far, TC. Swapping him out before Mason get in range. There's a rupture that's thrown out on the TC. Still going to be able to finish him out. Use the four staff. Now chopping wood on the rest of Team Liquid. That's a triple kill as Mason shows the Pup Seeker is, has a place outside of pubs. Sunstrike off the mark. Good attempt. Two racks down. Buybacks on TC and Quigva both. Can't imagine how this is going to end up turning back in their favor after that. They finally do get Universe, and they may end up tracking down Zai, maybe Mason as well. Zai, ooh, the shatter damage. Oh, nope, unable to get him. Koikva had the Scythe, actually. That's a little slow on Koikva. Koikva's usually so fast with that. And uh, Eddie had the um, Cold Snap up as well, mm -hmm. I believe. Could be wrong about that, but yeah, the Scythe was up, and... This is one of the things that EG is so good about too, is like disengaging, yep. like getting getting a nice fight, getting racks, backing up <laughs> with minimum casualties. I see this all the time, and it's a great play from both Mason and Zai, four staffing away, TPing above high ground, out of harm's way, and no harm, no foul, basically for Team EG. I didn't mean to laugh in your ear there. Did you see uh, Zai's latest item pickup? If not, I'll let you take a look. <laughs> ah, 
Nice. <laughs> it's a standard, nice. standard late game transitionary item. Getting up your uh, Mask of Madness on your Shadow Demon. A ultimate on the mark hits PPD. He almost walked back into the Sun Strike, but not quite. But yeah, I, I think this is going to be about all she wrote. Arteezy manages to add a Daedalus to his growing collection of big, scary items. Way too TC showing their face, but yeah, I, I think I, you know you're not going to lay it on on any one thing. But I think you're. I, I do think it has hurt them immensely not having a BKB up on TC. Yeah, I definitely think so. And Ko Koik was actually top net worth, by the way. Yep. So he's really been playing out of his mind this game as far as finding farm. And, and you saw that the uh, Deafening Blast meatball combination with this <laughs> did so much damage, but honestly didn't really have any follow-up. And Yep. You know, they have a great uh, thing going for them as far as Weaver plus uh, the Vengeful Spirit auras and, the, you know, the negative, damage, or negative armor from Wave of Terror, but it's just not coming to a you know, huge effect because of the no. lack of farm overall. And, and not to mention, you know, lack of being able to do anything once you get silenced after a stun from Ravage because yep. you don't have that BKB. You know, obviously the it's annoying being able to be ruptured, but if you have Lincoln's BKB, he can't do that because he can't knock off the uh, the Lincoln's from you with your BKB on. So, I don't know. It, you can only go so much. You can only say it so many times. But there's also other problems. Like, I feel that Way Too has died a little too many times off on the zone and and just. There's, there's a lot of little things that you can talk about, but more so, I feel like this game especially, I feel like EG's playing fantastically. You know, talk about Universe with these huge ravages, and Zai just being able to disrupt targets at the right time, and Mason being able to... He now has a BKB, which I think was a great pickup, and standing in the face of Liquid and just pounding in, and yeah, just RTZ doing his RTZ thing, you know? Having massive damage, massive farm. Couldn't agree with you more, man. I think you said it about as well as any of us could. And this one should be about winding itself down as the item lead is becoming pretty uh, pretty damn hard to imagine being surmountable. Uh, Boots of Travel picked up on Zai to go with his Mask of Madness because that's what you do at 36 minutes on a Shadow Demon. Um, Arteezy back up into you know good gold levels, getting near 1,500 gold on top of everything else. Roche. Obviously, still a ways off from respawning. But uh, with two racks down, he, Team Liquid really can't even leave their leave their base. They have no mechanic to allow them to do that. They don't have a Nature's Prophet or anything like that. If they get out by themselves, they will be picked off consistently. And at this point, EG can basically just sit on their lead and make it bigger and bigger. They're going to be able to be much more efficient if they want to be, or they can just run as five, play super safe, and wait for things to go fully in their favor. We can see Bulb is actually going to be the lone scout. He's going to get eyes on Arteezy here. He's actually got some help behind him. Here comes the AA ultimate. Let's see what happens with it. It's going to be shot behind the team, so that's not going to do anything. And there's going to be a swap. And there, Oh, oh Arteezy, no. BK being out of it. Waits, he's going to end up dead because of it. Rupture and Ravage. Quakeva's down. That's GG. That's no buyback on Quakeva. That is no way to initiate on a BKB hero. Yeah. <laughs> and he says, I think we lost. I, unfortunately, Demon, I think you did too. And I know the frustrations can be there, and you're just trying to make something happen. But <laughs> if, you, if you're sitting in the game and with the optimism of we can maybe turn this, initiating a fight with a swap onto a BKB RTZ is not the way to do it. It needs to be a solid stun. But yeah, overall, there, uh, there was just way too much farm on the side of EG and Really, everyone performed well from EG. And it was just great to see that. I, it's it kind of sucks saying this, but you know we've seen this matchup so many times in the last few weeks, and it seems EG just has Liquid's number. Liquid yeah. cannot. There's been close. There's been close matches, as you remember that really epic best of three series where it went the distance to like 60 minutes in a base race. But other than that, it's really been pretty much one sided. EG just got Liquid's number. Couldn't agree more, man. And EG just well, they had everyone's number today. They dropped their first game of the series, and I, I honestly wonder, I, if you ever talk to Arteezy, he'll tell you how essential it is that he has a practice game before he actually sits down to play professional. Yeah. And I'm, yeah. I'm willing to bet they didn't get it in because EG looked kind of sloppy. I mean, they didn't look like they were in real form in game one against Fnatic, and Fnatic beat them soundly. And then they're like, all right, uh, that's our practice game. We're just going to go win four in a row and win two best of threes. How's that sound? As they uh, blank liquid here, throwing up the goose egg two to nothing and improving their record to 3-0 and in D2L Western Challenge play.
Here in our last game, the standout performers, Quake, that looked good, as good as you could expect anyway, at 6-3 and 5, involved in 11 of Liquid 17 kills, much more impactful this time. 588 GPM led the way for that squad. TC, well, he just, again, uh, Bloodseeker just kind of poops on Weaver. It's just how that goes. It happens when it's played correctly. And having uh, the great play from Universe, who, by the way, finished 4, 1, and 18, part of 22 of EG's 24 kills. That's how active he was throughout this game. Uh, Arteezy finished up with a, with a uh, what is this, like three games, four games in a row? He finished with 680 or 650 plus GPM or something. It's ridiculous. But uh, finishes with 680 even this time around. He was involved in just 14 kills. He went 4-4, four and four, so it wasn't as if Liquid couldn't kill him from time to time. They just couldn't translate it at all. And uh, EG, looking very, very good. I'm your host here in AC Chambers. Thanks so much for being a part of the broadcast, guys. We're all done here on the D2L Western Challenge for today. The awesome voice dropping the knowledge on the other side of the line. His name's Trout Dota. Trout, before we say goodbye, why don't you go ahead and uh, drop the deeds. Let people know where they can find more about you on your various social media and uh, other networks. Yeah, uh, my Twitter is at Trout Dota, and my stream, which I will be streaming a lot more now, I've decided, awesome. uh, is uh, www.twitch.tv slash Trout. And if I could give a shout out to uh, my girlfriend, Lisa, it's our three-year anniversary today. Aww. So, yeah. Oh, here you go, Lisa. This <laughs> from me to you, uh, on behalf of Trout. Uh, congrats on that, man. It's uh, yeah, always thanks. good. Uh, always good to see good people make it in the relationship game. It is honestly hard to do that in the gaming sports, and I, I'm sure you know it as well as anyone. Um, but yeah, congrats to you, and make sure you check out Trout everywhere else again. Uh, Trout Dota on Twitter, and you can find links to everything else. So you can also find me. I'm at AC everywhere. Well, not everywhere actually. It's at AC on Twitter at A Y E S E E. And on Twitch TV, which is a channel, uh, you can find links to everything. Is why I still direct people there. I haven't personally streamed on it in a long time, and I'm really hoping to change that sometime in the near future. But it's twitch.tv slash ACTV. And you can find me under that name as well, A-Y-E-S-E-E-T-V, on YouTube and Facebook as well. So take a look there. Uh, we'll take a look at our standings plate real quick before we say goodbye. It's going to be a busy week here in the Western Challenge. And uh, as you can see, last week we went a lot of single best of three days, and it should be on the way. There we are. Up the standings works too. Uh, we went. I said standings. That's my bad. I screwed. I screwed up. There it is. See, Conrad reads my mind. Had it ready to switch because I'm a idiot that way. So the standings, whatevs, wasn't up to date. My bad. Uh, the schedules where I was trying to direct everyone. We had a lot of single best of three days in our first week of Western Challenge play. Now they're looking ahead to our second and third week. Third week not on the screen right now, but it's going to be just as packed. Uh, tomorrow, we've got a doubleheader, Cloud9 taking on Navi. Then Alliance gets underway, and we'll have uh, two two doubleheaders in a row. So we'll be playing four of their seven overall matches just on Tuesday and Wednesday, taking on Empire and Cloud9 first on Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, they square off against Fnatic and Team Liquid. TL and Fnatic match up on Thursday. Friday, I, I think we're building a statue out of Monster Energy cans that have been crushed on people's heads. I'm uh, pretty sure that's what the official Reddit thread says, and everyone knows everything you read on Reddit is true. Then Saturday and Sunday, two more uh, double best of three days. So make sure you mark your calendar. Make sure you bet your rares. And make sure you join us then starting at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That'll be noon Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. or 1800 if you happen to be out uh, out in Europe, our European brothers and sisters. Once again, on behalf of myself, Trout, Conrad, and everyone else here at the D2L, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll talk to you tomorrow again starting at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Enjoy your evening, morning, or afternoon, and enjoy some Dota.